Yo, this is Zist. Today we're going to be taking a look at a project called Discord Game Sample. This is a sample UE 5.3 project that integrates Discord Game SDK. What does this project do? Well, it lets you start the Unreal Editor, and when you do start it, it shows your Discord status as playing Unreal Zist game. And it then has a little bit of extra information like, hey, here are some details, and here's some state. Here's my party size, and look, there's large text, and there's small text. So that's pretty exciting, and I know for sure you want large text and small text in your game as well. We're going to talk about how to do this in this video. Discord released the Discord game SDK a few years ago, and it definitely takes some C++ work and really some UE build magic to get it to work. So uh, over a couple of days, I was able to figure out how this works, and I was going to put it in a game that I'm working on, but I thought, you know, it would be better if I just made it reusable, and hopefully I can save you guys a few days worth of work. First, let's take a look at GitHub. So here is where I have this project, and I will copy the link in the video description. This might look a little bit different by the time you get here, um, but there is a README definitely read that. Uh, I've also linked here the, uh, the Discord game SDK docs, and you can go there and download the official game SDK. So I definitely recommend doing that. But for this example, um, I'm just going to use the stuff that I've already included in this package. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this URL, and we are going to clone it over here to a new directory. And when we come in here, you're going to see that this is a U project. Um, there's really nothing else here. And I'm just going to go ahead and open Writer. And yes, we are going to, oh, you can't see this, but it says, do you want to trust this solution? Yes, we do. Now that Writer is done initializing, when it first opens up, the readme is open. And so I'm going to go through this part over here on this side. Um, again, there's a link to download the official version of the Discord game SDK, and I do recommend that you do that before you compile this project, because there are, there are binaries in this project. I have downloaded these. I've included them in the repository so that you can see exactly where they go. And you can use the ones that I put in here, but I mean, you should never just randomly execute binaries, like practice internet security. Go through this process, updating Discord SDK before you actually run this, if you care about security at all. So uh, how do you put this in your game? First of all, you will update the SDK to make sure that you have the latest version and one that you yourself have downloaded from Discord directly. Uh, you can read this for more information there. Next, you will copy the plugins Discord game folder. And so let's take a look over there. Here's plugins, Discord game. This entire folder you're going to copy. Here we have a U plugin. In the source, we have the Discord game plugin itself. Um, this here is what handles when the module loads, figuring out which DLL are we going to load which is based on the platform that you're running and how you're compiling things. And it loads it, and it gets the DLL, and then it logs either, yes, hey, that worked, or no, it didn't. This also has the Discord game subsystem. And this subsystem handles things like reconnecting to Discord whenever it's lost, and calling some virtual methods that you can override in your own project. Um, as well as logging, etc. So everything here in the Discord game uh, module you'll want. There's also in the third party directory, there's this Discord game SDK. And in here is a build file, which uh, this packages up these DLLs that Discord distributes. So um, whether it's Windows, Mac, Linux. This says, how do we package these files? Um, that's the Discord game SDK module, which is in the third party directory. And then the Discord game module is the one that actually then loads it up at runtime. 
So these two modules work together as part of the Discord game plugin. So you just copy this entire plugin. Now, once you've copied that plugin in your game, which for example, the Discord game sample here is what I have. So in your game, you will need to make your own custom Discord game subsystem. You will derive from the Discord game subsystem, which is in the plugin. And then here you'll do whatever stuff you want to do. This is, you know, how does your game work? The underlying subsystem will load the DLL for you. It will manage connecting to Discord and disconnecting from Discord and reconnecting when there are errors, etc. All that stuff will happen automatically, um, but it doesn't actually do anything. If you want it to do something, then you need a custom one. So if we take a look here at the custom Discord game subsystem.cpp, we'll see in the constructor of our custom subsystem, we're setting the client ID. We're also setting some other variables. You can do what you want here. Uh, in this method, which is the native on Discord core created, this is called whenever we connect to Discord. And so for this example, for this simple example, as soon as we connect to Discord, we're going to call this update activity method. Now this update activity method says if Discord is running, then we're going to use the activity manager to update the activity to all this stuff. Now you see here, there's a lot of hard coded stuff, state here, details here. This is a favorite icon that I've uploaded. Here's a thumbs up icon that I've uploaded. Clearly, you don't want to ship your game with all this hard coded stuff. You will tear this stuff out and you will make this game specific for yourself. You probably also want to have multiple different types of activity updates. So again, this is a very simple, just an example, custom subsystem. And the point is you will replace this with your own that has all of your own stuff in it. Um, there's one more note here, which is that if we look here, um, so in the header file here, you can see I have if deft this out, um, and in the CPP file, also I've if deft this out. So according to the Discord docs, this should work. You should be able to call clear activity, which should be able to clear. Uh, this rich present stuff out of Discord. However, this doesn't actually work. Internal to the Discord SDK, there is a bug, which is documented here. And so this is not a big deal. You just should never try and call this method. What this means is, as soon as you do update activity in your game, you can never clear that. Discord is always going to be showing activity so that you can call this multiple times and update it with different types of information. But at the moment, as of Discord Game SDK 3.2.1, this method, the Activity Manager Clear Activity, does not actually work. All it does is it presents an error. So I've commented that out. You can fix that in the future if Discord updates their Game SDK and makes this work. But it's not really a problem. So there are some setup steps that you need. For example, where does this client ID come from? On the Discord website, when you log in, you'll have to create an app. So for example, here I have this app, Unreal Zist Game, and this is the one that's set up as the default. And you'll see that the client ID that I've set up here in my custom Discord game subsystem is the same as the application ID that Discord gave me. So you'll create your own application and You'll copy your application ID. That's what you use as your client ID. Note also that, now this is covered in the Discord setup steps, but you'll have to set up a redirect to go to localhost. And you'll also then have to set up some rich presence. Uh, for example, you can see here, I have the favorites icon and the thumbs up icon. And these code names or these tag names for these assets are what are used in the, the code uh, here we have favorites icon and we have thumbs up icon. So those things you need to configure yourself. All right, so how do we actually see this work? Well, first thing is we build this. So we're gonna build the startup project, which is the Discord game sample. And we're building this in development editor mode. It should be fairly quick. 
So I'm going to open this up so you can see all these warning messages. Uh, this is actually from the Discord game SDK. Now, unfortunately, they actually wrote this in C, not in C++, and so they're using this uh, stir in copy, which is generally not a secure way to do it. But if we take a look over here in the types.cpp, uh, they are explicitly copying a maximum of 256 bytes, and then they are explicitly null terminating. So they do this everywhere where they use stir and copy. And therefore, this is not really a security problem. They're not, there are no buffer overrun problems uh, in this code. However, Writer or, or Visual Studio rather is complaining loudly about this. Uh, you can set this CRT secure no warnings, and I see, in fact, Discord attempted to do that at the top of this file. However, it's still giving warnings. And so you can ignore this. This is not really unsafe, uh, and this is not something that, that I've done in my code. This is part of the Discord SDK. It's annoying, but it is what it is. It's not really a security problem. It's not really an issue. So we see here build success, so that's great. Now we're gonna click the run button. And we're starting this up. I'm running it on the UE 5.3 engine. This is the one that I've downloaded from the, uh, the Epic Games Store. Now the first time you do this, it might have to compile shaders. Depends on how much you've used that engine. And here we are. So it loads up this default map. Um, and we don't actually have to, to do anything. Uh, the way I've set this up, as soon as the editor starts, if you're running Discord, then it's, it's good. So if we look at Discord now, we can see that here my status is playing Unreal Zist game. And when I open this up, you can see that I have details here, state here, one of three in the party. How long have I had the editor open? When I mouse over the, the X, you can see large text. When I mouse over the thumbs up, you can see small text. And so all of these settings were passed in here by our update method. If this video doesn't suck, like, subscribe, share it with someone who might find it interesting. Have a nice day. Happy developing.